I'm Karen Elgizma at The London Chef, and we are going to teach you how to make the perfect mulled wine. And you're watching Go Island on Cha TV. On today's show, a new winery with a Pinot Noir that will be the talk of the season. And we visit Amuse Bistro in the Cowichan Valley for some comfort food. All that and much more on Go Island. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. Hello, thank you so much for joining us on Go Island. Merry Christmas, everyone. We are here at the London Chef celebrating the festive season by teaching, inspiring you how to make your own homemade mulled wine, which I'm so excited about because I've had some really bad mulled wine. I know, sometimes it's terrible. Oh, but when it's hates. good, it's great. It is, it and is. And nothing kicks off a Christmas party more than a huge glass of strong, mm. really aromatic mulled wine. Absolutely, because you get the smells and the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. spices and the warmth, it's just perfect. You walk in a room and you smell it, mm. oh, it's amazing, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. Christmas. Christmas, right there. So you know, I you know, I love the smell of Christmas trees and mulled wine combined. Yes. Wonderful. It okay, is perfect. so okay. mulled wine, you ready? Yes. You ready, ready? ready. You're not driving? Not driving. Good. She's so, <laughs> so, mulled wine. Yeah. And it starts with spices. Okay. And of course, we can come up with our own blender spices. Mm -hmm. But we sell this. It's a beautiful. It's by you know, it's by Jules and Kent, and it's um, the spice collection. Okay. And it's mulling spices. And why not? I mean, why not? What a wonderful thing! Great gift or yeah, something, you know? Yeah, actually, it is a great gift. So, smell that. Good lord, that's Christmas, isn't it? Oh man, it's that that cinnamon and orange. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do to okay. begin, the chef in me comes out. Of I apologise. I'm going to slightly toast my spices. Okay. You know, so I'm going to pop a load of these into my pot. And we've got allspice and cinnamon and mm. cardamom and, and clove and nutmeg and all those wonderful things. Good. And while they're toasting, yeah. um, I think we may have discussed this in the past, haven't mm. we? What's the sexiest part of an orange? I forgot. How can I forget that? That's why I come back here. Tell me, what's the sexiest part? The zest. Oh, yes, the zest. The zest. The zest. The zest. The zest is the sexiest part, Dan Hayes. Life. And if you take an orange and you cut it like this, what do you have? Well, you have some flesh. Yes. You have some white, the pith. Mm -hmm. oh, you and pith. you have you the, pith. The, pith. <laughs> the pith. And you have the orange, which is the zest. Right. And what we're going to do is cut off, cut off the pith and the zest. So it's a pity that you have to cut off the pith. But it has to be done. I can't help but you say pip and I just want to do so, so put it down like that. Yes. And um, is it my accent? That's the problem, it, isn't no, it? No, it's the list, but I mean, it's the pip. When you say pip, you feel like you want to talk so like this. And you see how we've taken all the white yes. off that. Does Beautiful. that make sense? It does yeah. make sense. We've taken all the white off it, you know, and you've just got zest. Pop that in, nice. okay? Next thing I want is some juice. And we've got all those spices in there already, so don't worry about pips. Okay. You know, don't worry about pips. We'll just pop a load of juice in. Wonderful, just like that, lovely. And that small amount of zest does a lot, to be honest. Okay, so you don't need much. You don't want to overdo it. Don't need much. Okay. Next thing, some brown sugar. Okay. And not too much brown sugar. Because you already have the sweetness of the wine. You already have the sweetness. Yeah. And to be honest, you know, people, let's face it, these days, People are going to a, a drinks party every night. Yeah. You know, they don't want heavy, sticky, you know. You oh. already sugared out. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Out. Um, red wine. Okay. If you use a ghastly red wine, your mulled wine will be ghastly. No ghastly red wines. Okay, so if you get that ghastly bottle for Christmas, don't use it in your mulled wine. Exactly. Mind you, don't use it in your cooking either. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> to be fair, you know. I mean, Re-gift it. it. Re-gift it or feed it to the cat. <laughs> You know, feed it to the cat, the cat will sleep very or well. Or your uncle who has no taste in wine. <laughs> exactly. And um, brandy. Okay. Brandy. Now, in my humble opinion, don't skimp on the brandy. Okay. 
because this isn't hot wine, this is mulled wine. Right. And mulled wine should have a lot of brandy in it. And you shouldn't give people a huge glass of it. No. We might have a huge glass of it. <laughs> Say it. But you know, you shouldn't give people a huge glass it's of it. It's something you sip on, like you, you would, a, a, exactly. like a warm drink. You nurse it, you sip on it, you enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you know, let this warm up. But what mustn't you do? Overcook it. Overcook it? Yeah. If you boil this, yeah. you will lose the booze. That's right. And we don't want to lose the booze. No, I mean, when you're cooking, you want to lose the booze, but not when you're making the mulled Absolutely, wine. Absolutely, because this is a drink, it's a beverage. We it want, is. We want the booze there, it's Christmas time. And we, we really want the booze there, because at Christmas, sometimes we have guests that come into our home that we might need a little help with the Uncles mulled wine. Aunties. Yes, absolutely. Uh, while we simmer the uh, mulled wine and warm it up, um, we are going to head out to the Couch and Valley to actually a winery, one of the newer oh, wineries in the Valley, Unsworth. And they are bottling their pride and their joy. So Chetta Singh caught up with them, found out a little bit more about their winery and about their love, the Pinot Noir. If you haven't been to Unsworth Winery, put it on your list of things to do over your Christmas holidays. It's one of the most beautiful pieces of property in the valley. Marydale Cider is just down the road. You can pick up a bottle of wine for one of your festive meals uh, and have a visit. It's a lovely, lovely place to go. And right across from Unsworth is Amusé, and we're going to go there in just a moment. But first, as we let our mulled wine simmer, uh, not simmer, but warm, because we don't want to boil our, our wine. Eggnog is one of those traditional Christmas drinks that a lot of people avoid making. They're scared of raw egg, they're buy the box stuff at the grocery store, but there's nothing like a real eggnog. What's your wisdom for eggnog? Well, eggnog essentially is a creme anglaise. It's a creme anglaise, a custard, a very, very light French. custard. And the trick to a good, good custard, or a good creme anglaise, a light one, is to keep moving it and never let it get too hot. Okay. What you don't want is scrambled egg and milk. Okay. You know what I mean? I do you want, know you, you want You want a, a beautiful liaison, something creamy and light. Okay. And I would suggest that you need lots of rum in it. Yeah. And over the top, Plenty of fresh nutmeg. Okay, that because that fresh you know, nutmeg is who wants, just... Who wants a bloody glass of custard? What you want is a, <laughs> a, a glass of custard flavored with nutmeg and a bit too much rum. Okay, I love it. There you go. London Chef tip on how to make fantastic eggnog. We're going to try this in just a minute. Mulled wine. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It smells like Christmas. But we're first going to head back to the couch in Valley where Suchetta Singh walked across the field from Unsworth Winery to Amuse to talk about comfort food. Mm -mm -mm. So put on your wish list of things to experience on the festive season is go to Unsworth Winery and go to Amuse. Such a beautiful piece of property and the old farmhouse, the experience of just being there, it is absolutely spectacular. It's like being in Tuscany. Uh, we are with Dan Hayes, our favorite chef, the London chef, learning how to make the perfect mulled wine. Now we've warmed our wine yep. up. What's the next step? We've warmed it with the brandy, the spices, the orange zest, a bit of orange juice, yeah. a touch of sugar. Okay. Um, and judge the sugar based on how big and sweet the wine is. Okay. Um, the next thing is don't let it boil, whatever you do. Right. Don't let it boil. And I think the best thing to do to serve it is to pour it into a jug. Oh, okay. Now, I'm just going to do a little bit here because, you know, yeah. um, it's the middle of the day and neither of us want to be absolutely sozzled, do we? No, not yet. Uh, not, not yet. No, later on, <laughs> later on, later on, later on, yeah. Um, and then make sure you pour it into a glass that can take some heat. Of course, good Because, point. you know, if a glass explodes... It's really it's awkward. bloody exciting but very awkward. Yeah, yeah. it is. It so let's do that and let's do that. Okay. And then the thing to do, really, to be perfectly honest, is just drink it. Okay. Okay, cheers, my friend. Cheers. Not too hot, I hope. Oh my gosh. It just smells so amazing. Oh, good Lord, that's a catch, isn't it? Oh, that is, oh. That, that is really good mulled wine, Dan Haynes. Really? Oh my gosh. She's too kind. No, no, no. no. I want you to have a sip, viewer, because this is the best mulled wine I've ever had you in mean, my what's life. What's that, what they call it? Smell-o-vision. Yeah, smell-o-vision. Oh my gosh, that is fantastic. It's actually okay, isn't it? It's like you have a little Christmas party in your mouth. I tell you, one or two of those in and Christmas time. Christmas is all good. Uh, we have to take a very short break, but please stay with us. When we come back, Dan Hayes tips 
foolproof tips on how to make sure you are not stressed when you make your turkey dinner. Welcome back to Go Island. We're at the London Chef today. We have learned how to make the perfect mulled wine. Perfect, I have to say. It's those spices and not overcooking it and all those little tricks. Um, now, one of the things that people get very stressed out about this time of year, making the turkey dinner. Yeah. What's the secret? Secret is this, mise en place. Mise en place. Do as much as you can before the big event. Dan also has a secret, a secret that he's never ever revealed to the public on how to make a turkey that's perfect. Yeah, I know, I'm so excited. Uh, Dan yeah. Hayes, tell us your secret. Well, we've talked about you know all the bits and pieces and the mise en place and how to get organized. The turkey itself, um, here is a trick. And I learned this from a very special cook. His name is John Greshner and he makes the best turkey that I know. This is what you do. You cook it and you eat it. <laughs> Love that! Uh, yeah, 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 you know, you take the bloody bird, you put it in the oven, you cook it, you pull it out and you eat it. Okay, you can rest it for a bit if you want and blah, 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 but that's what you do. Don't mess with the bird. Don't mess about it, brine it and this and inject it with syringes and all this stuff. You know, John Greshner, take the bird, put it in the oven, pull it out and eat it. Done. Done. Done like dinner. See, best tip ever. And I would have to say, stress-free. Stress-free. I, I told you, I promised you it would be the best tip ever. We have to take a very short break. I tell you, the couch in Valley is just a mecca of foodie stuff. I love going there. The wineries, the restaurants, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Um, Dan Hayes, thank you so much for all You're your welcome. wonderful ideas, tips, inspirational ideas, the mulled wine, the turkey tip. Um, any last advice for those home chefs? Because we do get stressed at Christmas, Absolutely. friends. Absolutely. The thing is, be organized. In the kitchen, we say mise en place, everything in place. You can't do everything on the morning of Christmas. You must be ahead of the game. Absolutely. Have it diced, have it chopped, have it cooked, have it par-baked, have it par-boiled, have it seasoned, have it wrapped, and have it ready to go. And drink. And drink. The mulled wine. <laughs> because that helps. Drink the mulled wine. Cheers, friend. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you. I hope you have a wonderful Cheers. holiday season. Mm. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. Women's clothing provided by Tulip Noir. Casual designer fashions. Men's wardrobe by DG Bremner & Co. Menswear and accessories. Care services provided by Salon J.